If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. This is our 15th season, and as you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It's more important than ever to become an informed patient, and we are here to bring you timely health discussions. Now, for those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, by calling the live phone line at 718-499-6101. And second, you can email us your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net, and we'll bring them into our discussion. Now, only for this season, we have a special net viewers survey. If you haven't done so, please take the time to participate as you wait to take your turn to go on the air. The survey's here because we would like to give you the chance to officially and anonymously sound off about your opinions for Ask the Doctor and net programming in general. Now, for those who could not get through and are not on our mailing list, please write to net at 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, and ask for the survey to be mailed to you. And of course, you can participate online at netny.net. Thank you very much. Now, for this episode, it's a great show. Three of my favorite all-time guests are here today. Dr. Kanchmala Katapati, internal medicine attending at New York Methodist Hospital. Dr. Alexander Shaknovich, cardiology attending at New York Methodist Hospital. And Dr. Placido Morano, rheumatology attending at New York Methodist Hospital. Welcome. Welcome to all of you, and we'll get to meet the, re-meet the guests in a short while. Mm -hmm. Let's look a little bit shortly about what happened in the news this week. And this week was a particularly contentious time with reference to PSA, or a screening test for prostate cancer. And men have been lining up to go to these health fairs and so on to get the PSA, which is a blood level of a chemical that's found in prostate cancer as well as in normal cancer, as, excuse me, as well as in normal prostate. And now they don't know what to do. Now they're totally confused. Should they go for the yearly screening? According to a panel, the test did more harm than good because they said that as a result of what we call false positives, where they get a, a result that looks like cancer but it turns out not to be, that men are getting unnecessary surgery and unnecessary biopsies, leading to impotence, incontinence, and other disasters. So what's the right thing to do? I mean, we've heard le from the urologist last week, we had Dr. Um, Cheatham on, who, who was talking about the importance of prostate screening and how urologists are seeing fewer patients coming in with metastatic prostate cancer because they're being picked up early. So the answer is probably somewhere in the middle, but the best thing is to meet with your doctor and find out if prostate screening is appropriate, and when you go for the screening, to know what you're going to do if it comes back positive or suggestive of cancer. Many men cannot take that, and they end up going for all kinds of procedures that do lead to problems. But I think that's not the problem. The problem is not the test, but how we react to the test. So make sure you ask your doctor what he thinks or she thinks and what's right for you. Same thing with mammography. I mean, the same group put out a notice a couple of years ago saying that women shouldn't do cell breast exams anymore and they shouldn't go for screening mamm mammograms from 40 to 50. And many of us disagree with that. Again, we refer the patient to the physician. My recommendation would be starting at age 40 to get a mammogram and then get one every year thereafter. And it's been proven that the mammograms do save lives, and study just major study just came out of Sweden showing a 29% reduction in death from breast cancer for women who had screenings. So again, ask your doctor. Nothing's 100% one way or the other, but I think in both cases, I would rather err on the side of screening. We'll see. Maybe our doctors have some thoughts about that. Vitamins. Again, you get the idea that people are taking vitamins because you think it's going to make them stronger and live longer. Turns out those who are taking the supplements and vitamins are living on average less. They're dying of other causes. Um, and it's not 100% related to the vitamin, but just a group of people. So if you take a group of people taking five vitamin pills a day and you compare them to a group not taking them, there's more chance of dying early with the people taking vitamin. What does it mean? I'm not sure yet, but it means maybe not take vitamins unless you definitely need it and speak to your doctor to see what vitamins you need. Women, we know, may, may be taking calcium, vitamin D may be indicated. But to take copper or selenium for just the fun of it, doesn't make any sense. So ask your doctor what you're doing. Now, the third one has the chocolate. We hear good things about chocolate every, I know Dr. Shaknovich is a fan, you're a fan of chocolate? 
and he likes the dark chocolate. Now, I don't know, does anybody of that bitter, you know, that 70, 80% cocoa, and that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. That, you know, keeps the arteries young, it lowers your blood pressure, antioxidants we hear about. But many, like the Hershey milk chocolate, doesn't have that percentage. So the study was done in Sweden where their regular Hershey's bar contains 30% cocoa, which is a strong enough level to, to afford protection. They did it in women for some reason, but they're saying that it would pertain to men as well. There's a 20% uh, reduction in strokes and heart attacks in people eating two candy bars a week of Hershey's. So a week. A week. So, I mean, you could put away two in a day, right? Oh, yeah. In an hour, right? A half hour. I've seen you go at it. I love that. <laughs> what, what's your favorite chocolate, Dr. Shagan? I really don't have a favorite brand. I, do. I don't eat that much chocolate, but I do like it strong. It's, it's, it's good. You like the strong kind, though. Now, Monsignor Bennett, I see sitting there. And we have a special guest sitting there, Dr. Katapati's father. Is mm -hmm. joining us all the way from India? Yes. Well, he's visiting from no, India. No, I'm trying to make it impressive. Yeah. He's all the way from India and came in to see the show. And um, he's sitting out there next yes, to Monsignor. And they're, they're already bonding, I see, the two of them. But what's his name? Srinivas. Oh, very good. And when he goes, what part of India does he live he's in? He's from Bangalore, from the south. Oh, very India. nice. My wife went to medical school in Bangalore. This, right? There's a good medical school there. Oh, yeah. And um, what was his favorite thing? Did he tell you what he liked the best about being in Brooklyn? Being in Brooklyn, <laughs> he just likes the fact that he can get out there because he visited my brothers in you know, Pennsylvania oh, and Ohio, oh. so it's uh, pretty boring out there. So he likes the fact that he can get out and walk around and you know watch people, go to the shops. That's great. We hope yeah. you enjoy the show and thanks for coming here. And I have to give a shout out to a longtime listener I met this week at Methodist Hospital, Eileen Harvey, 88 years young, and we're wishing her a fast recovery from her recent surgery in New York Methodist Hospital. And her daughter's a big shot in the school system here. Gail Harvey is assistant principal at St. Saviors Elementary School in Park Slope. So we wish your mother well and um, wish you well. Now we have a very tough quiz, and we try and make them topical. So what was yesterday? Columbus, Columbus Day. Day. How old was Columbus when he discovered the... Uh, 32. Or, well, it's close, 41. It's, you knew it. I think Dr. Shagnovich yeah. knew it. <laughs> but um, this is the question, though. I didn't ask ages or when he died or who. I want to know what important commodity did Christopher Columbus reintroduced to the new world. This commodity had left for a while, and he brought it back. It's kind of tricky the way our uh, quiz master did this thing. What important commodity did Christopher Columbus reintroduce to the new world? And we'll be giving some hints if you don't know. So just to refresh, in case you've forgotten after this long soliloquy here, tonight's topics are internal medicine, cardiology, rheumatology. The number to call is 718-499-6101. Now you can also email us your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net <coughs> and please take the survey that we talked about. Very important to keep Ask the Doctor on the air. So what we'll do is we'll take a short break and when we come back we're going to start answering your phone calls so don't go anywhere. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are internal medicine, cardiology, and rheumatology. Now let's meet the doctors. Dr. Karapati, this is, must be like your fifth, how many times? Yeah, probably. It's a great show. And there's a story here. She was supposed to be on our first show of the year. And due to um, a wedding anniversary, I think yes. it was the 20th anniversary with Dr. Fair. Rao. She married to Dr. Yes. Rao, a vascular surgeon. She decided uh, initially to be on our show. And then apparently, <laughs> I don't know what happened at home, but then she ended up going there. Yeah, but she I like I told me, you, yeah. I wanted to avoid the fights at home. But yeah. she assured me she would rather be on the show. But anyway, um, <laughs> so tell me, what happened Excited. We haven't seen you over the summer. What happened during this? Anything? Well, I had uh, my family visiting, my parents and my sister, who's never been um, here, so she was visiting also. Um, How is that with the parents over? Does that, is that oh, nice? No, it's good. It's very nice. You can't really fight, though, with your husband when they're uh, uh, No. Right? No, well, it's good. You <laughs> tranquility in the house. And it's good for the children, you know. They it get to nice. spend time with the grandchildren, so it's nice. But they're leaving soon. Did they're you go to any broad Broadway shows? Uh, we actually went to Zarkana, the uh, you know, Cirque du Soleil show. Oh, that's where they twist themselves yeah. backwards. I yeah, I mean, we did Broadway shows before with them, so this was something different. That's nice. It's always great yeah. to have you here, and we're going to be taking all the questions on, on, on internal medicine. Like, what kind of things do you think people are going to call you tonight about? 
what should they call it? Should they talk about the diabetes, gout, the diabetes, hypertension? Well, we have uh, we have rheumatologists here. here about the yeah gout. Um, anything. I mean, you were talking about vitamin supplements or if they have vaccine questions. So, you know, Dr. Karapati, we're ready to take your questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming. Okay. Dr. Shagnovich, who is, I always loved him, he's here because he has a way of putting a spin on medicine that you don't usually get from a doctor. He'll give you a phil philosophical answer that you think about it and it makes a lot of sense. And uh, a lot of things that we get worried about, we shouldn't be getting worried about. You know, part of getting old, right? A natural process. I'm, that's what I've learned from you. I, I think it is, yes. At least in my case, I've been getting old. So. You look good, though. It's looking it's good. It's delighting. But I heard you were hiking in mountains over the yes, summer? Yes. I. Uh, my children are French-speaking, so uh, my daughter was in Paris and needed to be rescued. So I took my son there, and we spent a few days hiking in the Alps. Wow. You get any, uh, any aches and pains from that? Uh, just lots of stories that are completely out of character for both my son and me. But is it a good time to bond up there in the Alps? Uh, we, had a, we bonded, I think, better in Paris. Okay, <laughs> me too. I would think so. So we have anything new that the people should know about in cardiology? Uh, technology keeps getting better. Uh, percutaneous aortic valve replacement procedures, I think, are uh, coming into their own. Uh, anticoagulation blood thinner technology is improving. Um, in general, cardiology is at a point where it behooves all of us to get good results. That's good. And um, tighten up somebody's test where a guy gets a stress test one day and drops dead the next day. Uh, that, that is actually quite unusual. Uh, again, uh, I, I've been saying for quite a while that if the patient is competent and mm -hmm. the doctor is good and they work well together, the results have been extraordinary. Very good. Thanks a lot. So we'll be getting a lot of questions for Dr. Shaknovich. And of course, Dr. Morano, who always brings a smile to our face when he's here. Thank he's you. always funny. He goes, Thank you. Do you have any uh, jokes for us today? No jokes today. Nothing you could My mention. My mother-in-law was over this weekend. So that's enough <laughs> okay. said. So <laughs> <a little> <laughs> okay. What's her but name? I love my wife. Give her right? a shout I out. I love yeah. my wife. What's her right? name? Helen. Helen. So Helen, he, he's just joking, right? Joe's just joking. Helen. Right. Did you anywhere interesting that the audience might be interested to know that you visited this summer? This summer I just worked and worked and worked. It's tough. It's tough I, but I play a lot of ball, basketball. All right. Outdoors all the time, weekends. Dr. Shagnovich was a racquetball player. Oh, really? Day. Squash. Squash. Oh, good. Is that different? Sort you of. still play? Different. No. Oh, that's, a, that's sad. And um, I, I, I run from 8 to about 12 o'clock uh, every Sunday and Saturday. Fantastic. And your daughter's in Chicago? Yeah, medical she's in school. Chicago Medical School. Thank God. She, she was here during the summer, which I was very happy. She was at um, in Cornell. Great. And uh, she's doing great. Thank God. That's the most important thing. Then you uh, know what my neighborhood, Baruch Hashem, you know? Uh, that's the, uh, the old Latin. Old Latin, okay. right. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to start. Who's going to be our first caller? Is it Maddie? Is it Grace? Let's see who it's going to be. Hello. Hello. Hi. Who, who is this, please? Oh, this is Brian. Brian, how are you? You're our first caller of the night. Yes. You know what that means? No, I don't know. No, not much. Not much. <laughs> okay. But if you get our quiz, you're going to get the prize. Okay. So what, what's, what can we do for you? Yeah, I called like two weeks ago, and you told me to call back last week because it was the end of the show. You I had the shock? Are you the one who had the 14,000 volts of electricity passed through? Yeah, yeah 11,000. 11,000 volts. Wow, how did that happen? Brian was a Con Edison person. No, no, um, it didn't happen up here. It happened in the um, Caribbean. In the Caribbean? Was it lightning? No, that was working. Wow, and he got 14,000 volts, and now he's getting some numbness in his in extremities and so on, which I think is amazing that you survived the, the, the 11,000 volts. Dr. Yeah. Shagnovich, and people getting this kind of shock, what happens to their heart? What typically is... Uh, uh, certainly, uh, you can develop cardiac arrest. Um, it, there may be a, a lingering effect as well, and so it behooves you to uh, have an echocardiogram t to uh, assess your left ventricular pumping function. Uh, beyond that, I, I don't think it has any long-term effects on the conduction system itself. So we've got to get that out of the way. And then Dr. Morano and Dr. Catapani, what yeah, about... Entrance and exit of uh, electricity. Uh, that could cause burns throughout. Where did it enter? I feel it entered from my side, but it came out from on my, on my thighs. And the, uh, where is the problem now? In the, lo in the legs? Yeah, the problem is on my waist down because the doctors have told me that I'm, I can end up having a stroke or end up being crippled because it, it, um, I end up with head injuries. Oh, 
It's amazing. Do you think of any th causes for his numbness? This happened several years ago. This yeah, right, whether it's related to that or not, I mean, it's hard to say. I think, uh, you know, he needs to be evaluated for other medical problems mm -hmm. or to see if it's related to uh, that. Did, did, did they do an EMG on him to test his nerves? Uh, um, Brian, what test did they do? Oh, they do all the tests that they can do. The amount of MRI, oh, the amount of did. MRI I've done for the past couple of years is like 14 MRIs. Wow. With the brains. You know what? We can get you a second opinion. After the show, just give me a call and we'll get you someone to just kind of review it from scratch. Okay? okay. Sounds like he needs a neurologist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I just attended a neurology clinic for the past seven years. Yeah, but now it's on my way to my life in my life. You know, it looks like you're very lucky to survive 11,000 volts. I don't want to make it more than it is. But yeah. um, shocking. it's amazing that you survived it. And now we wonder, like Dr. Karapani said, are these changes related to just getting older and not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of changes taking place in my body that I can't really um, identify. Ryan, it's an amazing story. Sometimes we have to, we have to hear more about it. I'm yeah, glad okay. that you made it. And give us a call after the show. Okay, we're now going to go to Carmen on line three. Hi, Carmen. Yes, hi, doctor. Hi, where are you calling us from? Okay, how are you? Very good. Where are you calling us from? I'm in Fort Greene. Oh, Fort Greene, not far from the... You ever go to that movie theater at the Brooklyn Academy of Music? Yes, right by there. I'm right like by Junior's Restaurant also. Right, what do you think of Junior's? Oh, it's nice, you know. I don't get a chance, but like my husband, he likes the cheesecake there. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Have you been to Virginia's? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's nice. I went by the other day, two of the letters are out. But, I mean, uh, did you yeah. see that? <laughs> I hadn't noticed it, but, you know, it's like once in a while I pass by because it's so famous there. Yeah, and then in the, in the movie theater, there's a place to eat. Did you know yeah. that? Oh, it's a very no. nice uh, restaurant. It's a nice restaurant. So you go see a movie. It's $30, I think, right, for a movie and a meal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Very nice. You know what? It, now it's like twelve fifty to go to a movie. So what, um, do you have an answer to the quiz? Uh, no, I had a health question. Okay, what is it? Okay, um, this morning about after midnight, I woke up with a very sharp pain in my lower right leg. Um, and it was like jabbing every five minutes and every ten minutes. Um, I went to my doctor today and she told me that it could be uh, neuropathy. Uh, I am diabetic, I'm 49. Uh, my sugar is under control with medication. And she asked me to try, it's called Neurotin for 300 okay. milligrams. And I just wanted to know, what exactly is diabetic neuropathy? Okay, okay. I'll take that. Uh, basically, you know, um, even, how long have you had diabetes? Uh, since I was, a, uh, when I was a teenager. Oh, yeah. So when you've had diabetes over like 10, 15 years, then, you know, that affects the nerves. Um, you know, it's, it's usually a bilateral, um, you know, meaning on both sides you get, tingling, numbness. Um, it, sometimes you can even get weakness. Um, you know, is that what you're having, the tingling and numbness? No, it's, it's just like pain. A, a jabbing, sharp pain, like somebody putting a knife to my leg and just stabbing. And it's only on one side? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it could be diabetic neuropathy, but it could also be, you know, some back problems causing that, you know, like a sciatica or, or uh, you know, radiculopathy. So, um, you know, what Dr. Marana was mentioning earlier, a, a test called EMG, uh, which is a test to see the conduction, okay. uh, you know, nerve conduction study and EMG. If you see a neurologist, uh, he'll probably be able to do that test and determine whether it's related to diabetes or uh, a radiculopathy. So, because okay. usually di diabetic neuropathy is on both sides. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I mean, Neurontin is still good, so you can take that, but have that, have that test done to evaluate exactly what it is. Dr. Moreno, okay. anything to add? Uh, diabetics are susceptible to so many musculoskeletal problems. Uh, sciatic is one, uh, gout, pseudogout is another, osteoarthritis, acceleration osteoarthritis, DISH, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, uh, charcoid joint can occur, especially if you have decreased nerve conduction. Uh, and infections. Uh, another thing that I would be worried about, acute onset of pain like that, would be uh, DVT, mm -hmm. D-vein thrombosis. Mm -hmm. So if your doctor evaluated you and it felt it was a neurological uh, problem, then follow through. Come and call us back next week, okay? Okay, and I enjoy your show. Uh, Wonderful show. Keep up the good work. Thanks very much. 
Uh, why do people, di diabetics, get silent heart attacks where they actually don't realize they're having a heart attack? Uh, it's part and parcel of the process that we've just been alluding to. There are changes in uh, the peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system, and so the, uh, the signaling mechanism, the pain mechanism, uh, can be uh, attenuated. Uh, and so diabetics, and not just diabetics. Uh, Elderly in yeah, general? You no, know, it, it actually, it used to be t said that a third of heart attacks were silent heart attacks. Mm. Um, but suffice it to say that if you are at risk, you ought to be screened, and most doctors today still would screen with a simple electrocardiogram. Excellent. We'll go to now Ivan on line two. Hi, Ivan. Ivan? Hi, Dr. Garner. How are you, Ivan? Fine. I got, I got, I got, I think, the answer to the quiz. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold on. I like to, you know, I like a little bit of drama here. Wait a second. Take a step back. Okay, now the question was, what commodity did Christopher Columbus reintroduce to America? Maps. M-A-P-S? Yeah, M-A-P-S. Is it M-A-P-S? Yes. Yes. Oh, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. Maybe maps would have been better. I don't know. But maps, maps, maps is not the answer. I got a joke for you, a short joke. Uh, the, a, friend of, uh, a friend of mine uh, gave me a pass to go to a uh, health spa and get, my, uh, get a manicure. Ivan? And, it, and he said, I said to him, uh, that's no need. Uh, I bite my nails. I save money. I guess that's it. But anyway, I thought maybe the seven-second delay might bring an additional punchline. But Ivan, Ivan. Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Doctor. Yes. You have a question? Yes. Dr. Garner, I've been taking from my uh, doctor a bistolic for a blood pressure, bistolic 5. Okay. He, I took it for about two weeks, thinking that the side effects would go away. And I, today, and they, and they stopped it. Then I took it again for the last three days. And I'm doing nothing when I'm home but sleeping. It's making me sleep like, like, like I, all day. And also, I'm noticing in the morning when I get up and I take it, a very bad flushing to the skin, like from my neck to my forehead, very, very red. Is there, is it, could this pill do it? And which other pill do you think would be good for me that won't give me okay. the redness? Let's see what the panel thinks. What is so, a bistolic, or nebifolol, uh, is, a, is a medication, a recently approved medication in this country in the category of what we refer to as beta blockers. It actually happens to be an excellent medication. The side effects you are describing are extremely unusual with mm. this medication, and uh, I certainly have never heard of these specific side effects. And so, as with many questions we hear on this show, our recommendation tends to be go see your doctor discuss this with your physician because it may be uh, unrelated to the medication and in terms of replacing Ibivalol, there are lots and lots of other medications to be tried in hypertension. Ivan, thank you very much. Okay? Have a nice week. What was that? Bites my nails? I don't Bites know. His That's what the punchline. That was his job. All right. All right. Good. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from uh, Brooklyn. Which part? Um, Midwood. Midwood, what's that nice accent that I hear? That's from Israel. Israel, very nice. It sounds nice, the accent. Thank you, thank you. So, so what can we do for you tonight? Okay, I have a question. Um, I'm having some personal problem which uh, prevent me from sleeping. So I went to my doctor and he gave me uh, MBN, 5 milligram. Mm -hmm. So in the morning when I woke up, it made me forget what day it was. So I, I ignore it. I figure maybe it's coincidence. But then the following two nights, I didn't take it one night after the other. The following two nights, I took it again. And again, I forgot, is it possible it's um, my age mm. <laughs> or it's, it's a reaction from my ambient? How old are you? 74. Okay, so what are we going to do about this? I want to know, should I stop the Ambien or should I continue? Let's see what our doctors think. She's having a personal problem, can't sleep, taking Ambien and having little bizarre effects in the morning. Right. I mean, it could be uh, from the Ambien. It can cause, uh, you know, memory loss. Um, but, you know, uh, is it helping your uh, sleep problem? Are yes. you sleeping better? Yes. Okay. I I'm sleep five hours. 
to sleep. Oh, five hours. That's great. <laughs> I love it, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Morano, what do you think? Uh, Ambien has been known to uh, cause people to act in a funny way and be forgetful of it as well. I've heard stories where people get up in the middle of the night in their pajamas or in their underwear and they get in the car and they drive over uh, and then they wake up and they don't, don't know what happened. Uh, so it, it can ha you can have these amnesic uh, type of uh, episodes. Isn't the key, the key always, if you ask the sleep doctors, is the habits of, you know, mm -hmm. bedroom should be used only for sleeping, you don't need certain... Just, mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yeah. Sleeping so, is a big so problem, especially as you get older. So and do you advise me to stop? I'm advising you to seek your doctor's opinion because I can't tell you to stop or not stop a medic medication. I only could tell you certain things about medications. It's your decision and your doctor's decision to stop the medication. Okay. Right. I just wanted to know another opinion. Mm -hmm. You so got it. You got two I more. I will ask my doctor, and but I also respect uh, your opinion. Thank you. Thank and Lisa, you. next week we have um, Dr. Lombardo, a sleep medicine doctor. Why don't you try calling back and we'll get his opinion on this. Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Call in at 5 to 8. I'm going to take you special. You're going to be first. I, I respect it and thank you so much. I love you guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on next Tuesday. Shalom. I will Shalom. definitely call you. Okay, don't tell, don't tell anyone, okay? <laughs> okay, good. I All right, now we're going to take a short break, but before we do that, I'd like to remind our viewers, the net viewers, about our survey. I urge you to take a few minutes to answer the survey questions because they're going to use this sort of like a Nielsen rating, and the shows that make the grade stay. The shows that don't make the grade, they go. So the key is, I know a lot of our listeners don't know the computers that well. You can write to the net, N-E-T, write all in capitals, 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Write a little note, say, please mail me a survey. When you get that survey and you fill out for Ask the Doctor, if it's your favorite show, you write that down, stuff like that. It's very important because the other shows are writing in, so um, we want to keep this thing on the air. I know a lot of people enjoy it, so that's the key. So either do it online if you know how to do it, do it while you're waiting to come on the show if you make it in this way, or write that letter to the address that will show on the screen again in a little while. Now, we're going to be back in a little while where tonight's topics are internal medicine, cardiology, and rheumatology. And the quiz, what important commodity did Christopher Columbus reintroduce to the new world? We know it's not maps. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are internal medicine, cardiology, and rheumatology. And we have Dr. Kanchmala Katapati, Dr. Alexander Shaknovich, and Dr. Placido Morano. Now we're going to get back to our questions, and we're going to see we have Angela waiting. Hi, Angela. Hi. Hi, Angela. Nice to hear from you. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York. Which part? Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst. How are Very things good. out in Bensonhurst? Oh, it's wonderful in Bensonhurst. We like it out there. <laughs> it's very nice out there. What's your here. favorite restaurant in Bensonhurst? Oh, I like uh, a lot of restaurants. You How like about Tommaso? Rocco's? Rocco's on Foot Hamilton Parkway. Rocco's. Very Rocco's, nice we've heard Italian, of that one. Very nice Italian food. Fine Italian food. Try it one day. I heard it's not fancy, but it's nice. No, it's not. It's not very fancy, but it's wonderful old-fashioned Italian oh. home cooking. <laughs> We're going to get out there. Any, have you ever eaten there, Dr. Morano? Rocco's? Yeah. No. Aren't you from Bensonhurst? I'm from Bensonhurst. Dr. Morano is from Bensonhurst. How wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. We really is. It's a great area out there. It's very nice. I'm on one side of Bensonhurst. I'm on the other side. You know what I miss, though? Jan's, the ice cream place oh, on 86th oh, Street. That, that, you, that so this was so oh, wonderful. They give you a kitchen sink of ice cream where you go with five friends, and they fill up a kitchen sink with like about 50. Am I exaggerating? <laughs> You're not exaggerating. Fifty scoops that of ice cream, but so by the end great. of it, it was very messy. I'm not going to get anybody upset, but it was. It good. was really great. Them were the days. Down the block was that hot. <laughs> Remember, you put the coin in, you get. Yes. Yeah. That was on A6 Street also. Yeah. <laughs> and Jan said, "Your birthday, they would give you a free ice, ice cream, cream. Sunday." Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a tradition. 
Well, do you have the answer to the quiz? And no, I don't. Okay. I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. But I do have a question. What can we do? Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. I was, I was uh, diagnosed many years ago with asthma. And many, many years ago, I worked uh, in a hospital setting, and I used to smoke. And they said to me, what are you doing? And you got to stop this, because I worked for an oncologist. And uh, I stopped. I decided, I, what am I doing? I have to stop. Well, just recently, one of the humid days, I walked outside and I couldn't breathe. And I went to my doctor and he said, okay, antibiotics. And then I went to, uh, through a series of antibiotics and I went to a pulmonologist. And I was diagnosed with COPD. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a slight, slight COPD. And uh, they Angela, have me Angela. on medication. So what, I, I need to rush a little bit. What's the question? I'd like to know. Um, I'm on a nebulizer, mm -hmm. and I'm on a, a, a Spiriva inhaler, mm -hmm. and I'd like to know if there's any other kind of medication for COPD or any other course of action for COPD, anything else that I could do. Can I get a second opinion? Is there a doctor that you'll recommend? Okay, let's hear what Dr. Katapati, Katapati has to say. Yeah. Uh, well, the first and foremost thing is quitting smoking, which you did already, which is very good. Mm -hmm. How Many long have you ago. quit smoking for? Uh, oh, I was smoking about 20 years. Okay. And the I, which is the nebulizer that you're on? Uh, albuterol and saline. Okay. Um, I mean, is the, uh, those two are helping you, the Spiriva and the albuterol? Are you feeling better with saline, it? Saline, yes, and the Spiriva, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they, they can also use a steroid inhaler, even in COPD. I mean, uh, depends if your symptoms are relieved with these, you know, as needed, then it's fine. You can just stay with that. You don't need to use anything else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, like I said, quitting smoking was the best thing that you did, and just use the nebulizers as needed if they're helping. You don't need anything else. Yes. Angela, Only I hope as that needed. Yeah, I Thank hope you very help. much. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Keep watching. <laughs> Have a great evening. Take care. We got Joyce now. Hi, Joyce. Hi. Hi, Joyce. Where are you calling us from? Uh, bed in Brooklyn. bed -Stuy. Anything open up there since we spoke last? No. You can't get a rest. There's no rest. I don't understand it. There's got to be a market there for restaurants. Well, I go downtown Brooklyn. To where? Queen? No, downtown Brooklyn. Which, which one? There's a restaurant there called Queen. It's on Court Street. It's no. Old, it's an I old one. I go to Junior's. Junior's. We just had another person seeing Junior. Yes. It's still pretty good, right? Keeping very up. Very good. It's very good. It's a nice place. You've never been there, Alex? It's really I'll Brooklyn. I'll go tonight. You got to go. <laughs> Alex and Dr. Shagnovich may head out of there tonight. So what do you eat? The, the ice cream, the cheesecake, the French toast? I like the cheesecake. Cheesecake. Everybody likes that. Yes. So I hope you don't have any serious problem. What, what's going on tonight? Okay. I have a question. We're ready. Um, I just got out of the hospital with pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And now they have me on oxygen because my, the, uh, what do you call it? The blood gas uh -huh. was low. Okay. And I was told that the oxygen level goes low at night. Is that so? so the oxygen on a go low at night? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, and how old are you? 67. 67. And what medical problems did you have before the pneumonia? Oh, I have sarcoid, COPD, and emphysema. I'm going to ask Dr. Morano to quickly give you an answer on sarcoid and lung disease. Thank you. Well, sarcoidosis is a lung disease. These are what they call, call non-KCN granulomas as opposed to uh, granulomas that are seen in TB. And they do destroy lung tissue. So you're more susceptible to infections of the lung. And once you do have an infection of, of the lung, like a pneumonia, it could cause destru further destruction of, of the lung. And uh, you, could be, uh, you could remain with, uh, with a problem where you can't breathe well and you can't have good exchange of, of gases. Uh, sleeping at night, uh, you know, depending on, uh, on how you sleep. And I guess next week they'll, they'll be asking questions about uh, if you snore at night, do you have any occlusion to uh, breathing mm -hmm. at night? And that can definitely lower your uh, O2. And I, I, 
the cardiologist here can tell you it probably increases your risk of uh, heart attacks. Oh, so uh, you, you need to breathe better. And the best person to take care of the sarcoids and the lungs is a pulmonologist. Yes, I go to a pulmonologist. And Dr. Shainovich, a quick one. Lung and uh, severe lung disease and heart, what, is it, what does it do to the heart? Well, it, they, can, <clears throat> they can go uh, hand in hand. Uh, certainly, uh, if, even if the heart is a bystander, it can be affected by the lungs. Uh, and in severe cases of uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pressures in the arteries that go through the lungs go up, putting too much of a strain on the normally lower pressure part of the heart, the right side of the heart. So you can develop congestive heart failure simply due to severe lung disease. But what you were describing, and I don't know whether weight is an issue, but certainly in these conditions you look for anything that is correctable. And so when you talk to a pulmonologist, try to see if you can identify correctable components of, uh, of the illnesses that you have to see if you can't improve your quality of life. I hope okay, that helps you, Joyce. I just want to add something. Yeah, oh, sure, just make sure, um, you know, if you haven't gotten your flu vaccine and the pneumonia uh -huh. vaccine, make sure you get that. I got all of them, oh. and I'm not overweight. I only weigh 110. Oh. So. Is your heart beating regular? Is it irregular, your heartbeat, that they say? That's good. No, they okay. didn't say that. I think with sarcoid, maybe there's some Well, sarcoid can affect the heart, right. the brain, yeah. the lungs lymph nodes, etc. So it uh, need to be evaluated. But thanks a lot for the call, Joyce, and feel uh, better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we have last week's winner of the quiz, Patrick on. Hi, Patrick. How you doing, Dr. Garner? You, you, last week you won, correct? Yeah, I won last week, yeah. It was the most popular candy bar. And that was the question. Snickers. Snickers was the answer. Now do you have this week's answer? Uh, I'm going to go with livestock. Livestock? Ooh. Can you be more specific? Cows. Is it cows? <laughs> oh, you're a cousin away. Such a really? tough one, tough one. Oh, but anyway, oh, so doc, you should give me that one, Doc. I'm, I may, I may, I'm going to have our judges meet on that. Okay, we'll give you a decision later. Okay, no problem. All right, what can we do with you Dr. for you? Connor, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really been sick. I've been in the house for about a week. I haven't been able to go to work. With this gas reflux is coming up. And it's making me dizzy, Doc. It's, uh, I feel like i got a sour stomach. Let's go to Dr. Katapati because we're kind of rushing here. He's got the severe okay. heartburn, makes him lightheaded, panic attacks. Um, well, I mean, how old are you? I'm 50. You're 50. I mean, it could be just basic acid reflux. Um, so you should probably uh, make some changes in your diet. Right. You know, if you eat a lot of heavy, greasy foods, spicy foods, right. you know, cut down all of that. If you are a smoker or, you know, if no, you I drink don't alcohol. No, not at all. I don't okay. do any of them. Doc, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you feel that acid reflux could cause lightheadedness and dizziness? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, what do you think? I saw you shaking your head. Uh, to, I think. <laughs> to, to the hammer, everything is a nail. So anytime a 50-year-old man complains of heartburn and dizziness, uh, certainly I would uh, encourage you to uh, go to your doctor and get an electrocardiogram because heartburn can be a symptom of cardiac conditions as well. Doc, this has been going on for a lot of years. That is, that is, that is reassuring and makes... A cardiovascular explanation much I've less had so likely. Many cardiograms, it's ridiculous, and yeah. they say it's just panic <coughs> attacks. But Patrick, thank you very much for the call, and right, um, we'll talk to you next week, and I'll let you know what the judges say. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. One of our longtime loyal listeners, Patrick, on the show. But he, um, Jane, hi Jane. Hi, how are you? How are we calling us from? Middle Village, Queens. Oh, oh, very nice to hear from you. You know a place out there? Nobody. Yeah. What? That's my three sons, right? No. Philly's uh, Pizzeria or Italian Restaurant ah, on 74th Street in Elliott. <laughs> the best Italian and pizza food around. Better than DeFaris on Avenue J? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> something I'm, I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. Good. Thank you for the question. Now, what about, uh, do you have an answer to our quiz? Yeah. I, well, I think so. I don't know. Okay. Now, take a step back. Take a step back. You stick a step back? Yeah. And she fell. Wait. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, what's your answer? What is the most, what is the commodity that Christopher Columbus reintroduced to the new world? And you say? Spices. Spices? Spices. Spices, spices, okay, is it spices? 
Oh, oh. oh boy. What do you think about that one? No. No, disappointed. It's a disappointment. I thought you had it there. But I thought she said it, actually. It sounded very close yeah. to what the answer is. I did also. And just put that together as a tip with what Patrick guessed, livestock, and what sounds very much like spices. So really? You, so you were very close. Close but no cigar, right? Close but no cigar, but we can help you with the medical issue. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I finished the chemo, and I'm on radiation now. Very and, good. Uh, since I was on the chemo, they gave me Taximil and then Receptin. Yes. And I have, like, um, my right, just my right hand is tingly. Will that go away, or... Was okay. that going to stay? What size did they do the dissection, the, the axillary dissection, the lymph nodes, on the right or the, the left? left? The, the left. left. And this is on the right? Yeah, just, just the right hand. So she had surgery for breast cancer, mm -hmm. and now her right hand is giving her tingles, but she's been on some heavy-duty chemo. Is this possible? Yeah, certain chemotherapeutic agents can cause neuropathy. So basically, I think, you know, going back and getting evaluated. She might be also overusing the right hand, leading to carpal tunnel syndrome. So, well, I am a righty. Oh, you are a righty. Right. Right? Right. But it only happened since I was since put on those, the Taximil and Herceptin. Could be. Again, you had surgery on the left side, so you might be overusing the right side to lift yourself, push off on things, et cetera, et cetera. There's also a ulnar nerve that can be involved, and that gives you tingling in another part of the hand. So there's well, it, a, lot of, a lot of possibilities of what's causing the tingling, ma'am. Will it go away, or is it permanent? I don't know the cause, so I can't tell you if it's going to go away. But hopefully, you know, since you probably you have inflammation from the chemo and from the radiation, Maybe. it's possible it could go away. So let's see. How long does it take um, the chemo to get out of your body? Hmm. It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a specific answer for that one. But it should mm -hmm. begin to fade from the body. You know, the, you, had, you had prednisone too, right? Steroids? Yes. Yes. Let's wait. How long? When did it stop? Beginning of September. Yeah, so it's give it you know give it a little while you know you you got to get your strength back, and knocks you. I'm certainly sorry. bring it to the attention of your oncologist. Yeah. These are complicated questions. These are complicated medications, and the list of possible explanations is unfortunately quite long. Most likely, this is something very benign and transient, but while hoping for the best, it's good to be evaluated by someone who can put it all together for you. And Keep listening to. The and after I have the radiation treatment. I'm extremely tired. Oh, yeah, that patient's complaint. That, I can tell you, that's yeah. very common for patients. More enervating than the chemo, many say. Yes, it is. Yeah. Good luck to Keep you. Keep us posted, okay? All right, take care. Okay, be well. Thank you, you too. Thanks. We've been following her for over a year now. Oh, since, that's uh, why you knew what she had. So um, we're going to go to an email question and get your questions in this way. See, the mm -hmm. phone lines are busy. You want to get in? Mm -hmm. And you can answer the quiz on the email, too. Hi, doctor. I'm asking for advice on a back problem that continued even after spinal fusion, which was done three years ago. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm living in pain, low back pain, radiating down my leg and my ne and neck pain. Gone to therapy, I'm taking all kinds of medication, and it's taken a toll on my life my, and my marriage. Please advise me, thank you. God bless, Catherine. This is a big problem. As, as the population is getting older, there's more and more osteoarthritic changes, degenerative disc problems, and the uh, nerves can be compromised. Um, sounds like that this patient has uh, spinal stenosis hmm. with uh, not much uh, benefit from the surgery. Um, I don't know what condition she was in earlier. She might have had a, a condition where she couldn't walk at all. Uh, but the spinal stenosis is character characterized by pain going down the legs, either one or both, uh, exa you know, exacerbated by activities. And you'll see people trying to bend over. That, de that decreases the pressure in the lower back. Uh, the best person to, to consult with now at this stage is uh, chronic pain management. And chronic pain management will evaluate you and decide what uh, treatment uh, modalities they could use. So you see how debil you know, this could be debilitating. It's horrible. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a question from Penny and then we're going to go into our rapid fire round. Oh. It's all exciting that round. I'm going to tell you about we'll it get in a ready. second. Hi, Dr. Penny, how are you? Hi, Dr. Garner. How are you? Great to hear from you. Good. So first of all, do you have any, any, anything uh, to, to talk about the quiz? Yes, uh, I think the answer is horses. Okay, and I, I want you to take a step back. Okay. Okay, I want to set the stage. We're here and i um, very excited about this. What did Christopher Columbus bring to the, the New World that he reintroduced that hadn't been there for over 2,000 years? And you say the answer is? Horses. Is it horses? 
Oh, I can't. Yeah, very good. Penny, how do you do it? Did I get it? You got it. Oh, You're a grand, oh, thank you. grand prize winner. Very oh, thank good. Thank you. Have you ever won before? Yes. How many plaques? One. So now you have another. Where, where's this one going to go? Well, I have the one in my living room, so I think I'm going to put this in my kitchen. Oh, so you have living. We're gonna, how many rooms do you have? Uh, two bedrooms, <laughs> two beds, two beds. Sure. It's a lot more quizzes. You, to so you keep playing. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I'm really glad you got that one. He was close, wasn't he, uh, Patrick? Yeah. With livestock. And then she said species. Uh, sp what did she say? Spices. I thought yeah. she said horses. Yeah. Oh, very oh, good. So, so we'll, you made my day. I'm, you made our day. We're going to rush this to your freight. We, don't, we waste no expense here. Can huh? I ask my question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the medical? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I had a kidney transplant eight years ago. And I'm having another one with a pancreas. And I just, I can't, I have to go for a stress test. And I can't handle a treadmill. Oh. So I want to know what can I ask the doctors? What, you know, what type of stress test can I? Honey, let me ask Dr. Shagnevich, because this is his area of expertise. Um, good luck with your... Uh upcoming surgery, there is a pharmacologic stress test uh, that is available where we uh, simulate the effect of exercise on your arteries by using a, a one of several medications, um, and that is a nuclear test. There is a magnetic uh, resonance uh, imaging modality uh, that is also pharmacological and does not depend on your walking on the treadmill. Uh, there is direct imaging that is now available non-invasively. I'm not suggesting that that is necessary, but certainly that is available as well. So please speak to your cardiologist, and they will be able to select uh, the least uh, difficult uh, uh, screening test for you. But that's good news, because there are other ways to, to, more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak, okay? Uh, um, how, how Penny? Yes. Do I, should I hold on to give them my address? Yeah, definitely hold on to give them the address, and um, if for some reason we get disconnected, you call them right back. Okay. Okay, we won't forget you. Okay. Bye, Penny. Have a good week. We'll go to our rapid-fire round. Now where we go around the table, mm -hmm. question, question, question. We don't know. It's like Russian roulette. Who's going to get the question? Who's going to get what? Pace. But we have so many people. So first we have Carol. Hi, Carol. Yes, hi. Where are you calling us from? Uh, we're calling, I'm calling from Brooklyn. W which part? In Bensonhurst. Oh, right. another Bensonhurst caller. Dr. Uh, Dr. Morano's hometown. Yes. Did Roseanne Scotto grow up around there? Or yeah, but I think more in Dyka Heights. Dyka Heights, yeah. Dyka Heights. It's in Channel 5. I lived yeah. in both, Bensonhurst and Dyka. Which one you like better? Bensonhurst. Uh, Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst. <laughs> okay, so now um, <laughs> what can we do? We're in the rapid fire. I don't want to slow okay. this down, the excitement. Yeah. The question is, my mom was diagnosed with diastolic heart failure and she gets very bad bouts of ex ex exhaustion. Uh, she's 82 years old, and they're saying her heart is strong. So I wanted to know a little bit more about it. Okay. We're going to break the rules here. I'm going to go to Dr. Shagnovich on diastolic um, so dias failure. Diastolic uh, heart failure has to do with uh, abnormalities of relaxation of the heart muscle. So your mom's muscle pumps well, but it is too stiff, and so when blood has to re-enter the heart, to reprime the heart, it has to be driven under higher pressure. So uh, at this point, no medical therapy that is specific to this, but certainly salt restriction, weight reduction, and uh, slowing the heart would be helpful. Can it lead to the exha exhaustion that she's feeling? It can certainly lead to breathlessness and exhaustion. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, uh, work with your doctors to try to uh, optimize her medications, and please help her get rid of salt in her diet. Oh, yeah, Thank you definitely. so much for the question. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. Call us back. Thanks. We're going to James now on line four. Hi, James. Hi, Doc. How you doing? Good. Where are you calling us from? Massport, Queens. Massport. How are things out there? Good. That three guys. That's a pizzeria on 61st Street. Matt. Uh, the three brothers. You. The three brothers. Three my, sons. I was thinking three of my sons. three sons. That Fred McMurray. Remember that They're show? They're on uh, 61st Street. You think I? You think I would I like it in there? Mm, it's a pizzeria. Oh, so where would I go if I had to go? I want to impress somebody and take them into Maspeth. Where would I go? Uh, Ridgewood's got a place in Ridgewood called Joe's, which okay. is nice. Joe's, and that's a little... They're, Florida, Florida. They're on Forest Avenue. Forest Avenue. Very right. nice. Is that near the park or no? No. Okay, not near Woodhaven. It's right near the L. Excellent. The I'm Myrtle Avenue L. I'm going to try that. Thanks very much. Okay. What can we do for the you? The question is, 
my wife has nodules on her thyroid, and she wants to know if it's a serious procedure. Oh, Dr. Is she going for a, a thyroid scan, or is she going for a thyroid biopsy? A biopsy. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's important to do. It's an it's office procedure, so it's not serious, um, but definitely you need to do that. Did it, she already have a thyroid scan, or she hasn't? Yeah, had? she had, to, she had the, the, the x-rays done already, or whatever it was that they did it at Lenox, Lenox Hill. Right. Okay, I mean, um, if she probably had an ultrasound, and it would be a good idea to do a thyroid scan to see if it's what they call a cold nodule, and definitely a biopsy is good to do make they give sure her a that local it's nothing anesthesia? serious. What's that? Do, do they give her a local anesthesia? Oh, yeah, they will. They don't uh, put her out, do they? Uh, no, no, no. No, it's a simple, um, you know, office procedure, so yeah, it's she's not a big scared. deal. She, yeah. used, she used the one that won the prize four weeks ago, the uh, Mr. Potato Head. Oh, Mr. Potato Head, yeah. What was the first cartoon, the, the, yeah. the first commercial? That's, that She's was still your wife. waiting for her prize. It hasn't come yet. Uh -oh. It hasn't come yet? <laughs> no, nope. we didn't get the T-shirt and we get the plaque. You, you, you got the T-shirt and no plaque? Nothing. Nothing came. No T-shirt, okay. no plaque. I'm going to rectify this. Heads are going to roll here, okay? Okay. I'm sorry about that. Potato Head. You should be, if you don't get it by this week, you call back to the station. I spoke to them two, uh, two weeks ago. We're still waiting. I spoke to Net today. The lady from Net called me. All right. We're going to, this is, I, 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 don't, I won't rest now. until this is taken She's care of. She's heartbroken. I, I will take care of it, okay? I want you to assure her. Okay. Okay, take care. This is what the controversy is. Uh, Janet. Hi. Hi, Janet. What can we do for you? How are you? Where are you calling us from? Staten Island. Staten Island. That first Staten Island caller of the night. Yes. <laughs> what's, what's that nice restaurant in Staten Island, up second floor? You don't know it? Um, no. There, there's a nice one, Italianissimo. Do you know that one? No, I've heard of it. Right near the bridge. Very nice. What can we do? Because I'm, I'm getting rushed along here. Okay. Question need to ask. Um, it's, it's called post... Uh, I'll, I'll spell it out to you. It's called post, C-O-N-C-U-S-S-I-O-N. Post-concussion syndrome. Yes. Yeah, what is you that? have a little concussion, then you get symptoms that could be m manifold symptoms, multiple symptoms. Anybody want to tell a little bit about post-concussion post syndrome? She's just asking about that. How long is that going to last? Yeah. Well, it might last a few weeks. Um, you know, ba basically, what do you have? Like headaches, um, dizziness. It, it shows that it, it was shown on an MRI I had. Yeah. So. The back, I, had, I, had, I had a head injury and also a neck, a head trauma of an accident, a head injury, a neck, also a trauma of injury of the middle of my back. I think the bottom line is it takes a while. Yeah, it takes a few weeks to a few months. Yes. Yeah, your symptoms might last. Yeah, but there's nothing much to do. Rather Just be than patient. Mm -hmm. Be patient. It's going to go away. Oh. Okay. It travels behind your legs, too. You're going to get all kinds of crazy symptoms that people get for a while after this. And, um, you know, a lot of times they, they're not told they may experience these symptoms, so it becomes scary. But these are typical symptoms. Okay? Uh, okay. Jan, take care. Be well. Okay. Let's go to Lisa now. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Where are you calling us from? Hi. I just wanted to piggyback on the question you just... I've called us from Canarsie, Brooklyn. Okay. Great, great area. I love that out there. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to piggyback on the question you just answered about thyroid and receiving a biopsy. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's necessary to have a, a total removal of your thyroid if you have a multinodule goiter, or you just think therapy is okay? Um, for multinodular goiter, you don't necessarily need uh, removal of the thyroid. Okay. You don't. You know, you can just use suppressive therapy with low dose thyroid hormone. Right. I, I have, my thyroid levels are pretty normal. I haven't had any issues with that, but the nodules on both of my, um, both sides of my thyroid. Yeah, unless, is a, is unless the nodules, the sorry, unless the nodules are causing some compression symptoms, you know, sometimes they can press on your windpipe and all that. Right. You don't, you don't really need surgery. Okay, I'm having mm -hmm. some difficulty swallowing, so they suggested that, you know, since mm -hmm. the nodules have grown in size that they, you know, recommended surgery. Yeah, so if you had symptoms, I guess, you know, you should go with the doctor's recommendation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for okay, the call. Thank you so much. Thanks. We'll go now to an unknown caller. How are you? Hello? Okay, that's right. Unknown caller. Unknown caller number two. Hello? Okay, we have a few unknown callers here because actually the phone calls are going faster than our screeners can keep up with the phone calls. So this was 
tremendous night here, and I, I, I want to try and finish up. I'd like to give each of the panelists a chance to give a one-minute one advice on how to stay healthy. Dr. Moreno. Uh, women especially need to go for screening of osteoporosis. Hmm. We are discovering that uh, uh, women 50 and above start losing bone at a tremendous rate, and they should be screened to try to prevent this horrible disease that causes kyphosis as well as fractures that can lead to death. And so it's a serious disease, and sh you should be screened uh, at age 50 and above. Excellent. Dr. Shatnovich. For our grandfathers, uh, being healthy was a matter of luck. <laughs> for us, it's a matter of skill and luck. So look for doctors who will teach you how to be healthy. Excellent. Dr. Katapati, what? Well, I mean, since it's the flu season, I would say get your flu shot. It's always good. You can't mm -hmm. go wrong with that, and that'll keep you healthy and keep the kids also. You want to keep, yes. sh you should give it to your kids as well, yes. right? Because they're going to be going to school. Uh, the honor of the last call of the night is going to go to Brenda, but I, her line is not lit. So by default, it's going to, hello? 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 Yeah, who is this, please? Yes, this is Mr. Vaughn. Uh, I have a question, and um, my question is... I'm listening. Okay, my question is, I was just recently diagnosed with diabetes uh, 2, type 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they immediately did a sugar test. The sugar count came up at 315. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if it's very dangerous. I'm still <laughs> waiting for the other blood results. What's the question? The question is, I did the um, test again, and it came up two days later, 330, and I'm on metformin. Is that take time to work? No, metformin, if you've been on it for a few days, it sh the blood sugar uh, should come down. So maybe you need a higher dose or maybe you need more medication. Okay. Thank you so much for the call. And um, I, that's it for this episode. I'm we're closing with a full line of, of callers here. We may have to extend the show next time. But that's it for this episode. I want to thank Dr. Kanchmana Katapati, Dr. Alexander Shaknovich, and Dr. Placido Morano for coming in. We hope we were able to help you. And remember, it's good to be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or third opinions, as we've, as we've discussed tonight. Next week, we're going to discuss sleep medicine, orthopedic medicine, and endocrinology. In the meantime, visit our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. Here you can get my weekly tablet column, podcast, forum, email in your questions in advance. And you can also participate, remember, in that all-important viewer survey. I want to thank those who have already participated. Thank you to Dr. Linda Lapatosa, our quiz master, and I want to thank you for all your questions. And remember, tune in tonight at 10 o'clock for encore presentation of last week's show, which was a great one. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the tablet.